Right now, with the safety of its students in mind, how the Madison School District is giving police a heads up before entering the buildings. Also, the Beloit Police Department is adding on to its emergency response team, how the members will help the community. And later, a UW-Madison professor welcomes some new students with lots of questions on their minds. Find out if he was able to answer them all. Welcome to News 3 Now. You've probably seen stories recently of safety incidents at schools and other buildings where law enforcement takes some time planning and testing entrances, then wandering hallways in their response. Madison Metropolitan School District is hoping to avoid that if a situation arose in one of its schools by taking their building maps into the future. Armand Rahman tells us how. Right now, if first responders needed to enter this school behind me, they would have to look at two-dimensional blueprints to figure out how to get in and what spots they need to go to. But a state and federal grant for the district is hoping to bring those maps into the future. It's called digital mapping. A business called Critical Response Group will digitize the 2D blueprint floor plans of all 52 MMSD schools and some multi-purpose buildings. Madison Law Enforcement, Fire Department, and other agencies are also involved so they can literally get a clearer lay of the land when they respond. If um, EMS is needing to come in because there's um, someone that has, um, you know, had an asthma attack in a hallway, we can better, um, with these maps, can better say, like, this is exactly where it is, and this is, who, you know, we will have our nurse and our principal meet you at this door, and, you know, it's a lot better than, than the um, 2D maps. Daytime. MMSD was awarded the grant of roughly $199,000 from the Department of Justice and Wisconsin Office of School Safety. Tonight at 10, I'll go more into what the digital mapping will look like from Critical Response Group themselves. District leaders say right now, Critical Response Group is working on digitizing those blueprints first before they go on walkthroughs in each individual school and building. They'll hope to have those new digital maps in the next couple of months. In Madison, Armand Rama, News 3 Now. Madison police say a motorcyclist was taken to a hospital Tuesday evening after crashing into another vehicle. Officers and paramedics were called to the intersection of Nelson Road and High Crossing Boulevard around 5.30 p.m. Police say an 18-year-old man was driving his motorcycle north on High Crossing Boulevard when he collided with a sedan turning east onto Nelson Road. The motorcyclist's injuries are not considered life-threatening and he was ticketed for speeding. The sedan driver was not hurt. Madison police and fire crews busy this morning after a train derailment on Madison's east side. Dane County dispatchers said a car carrier fell off the tracks near the area of Walsh Road and Sycamore Avenue around 930. No injuries have been reported. Police say the train malfunctioned, which caused a rail car to come off the tracks and partially block Sycamore Avenue. More mild weather heading toward the weekend. Let's check the first warn forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Yeah, today we are close to 50 in Madison. Tomorrow will probably be warmer than that. As we look at the time lapse from the WISC TV Skycam, we had plenty of sunshine today. That helped warm the temperatures up. That, along with southwesterly winds, uh, brought those readings into the upper 40s here in Madison, but it was even warmer uh, in other parts of the area. And Doppler track right now, free of precipitation. Not looking for anything for about the next oh, 24 hours or so. High temperatures today here in Madison, 49, the official high temperature. 52, though, in Janesville, many locations to the west of Madison. Saw temperatures in the 50s to the east. They were mainly in the upper 40s, although Milwaukee did hit 51. Current temperatures are in the lower 40s, and they're probably going to stay nearly steady for the evening before they start rising. So here in Dane County, it's 40, uh, 45 degrees in Verona, 42 in Stoughton, and 42 in McFarland. Look for mostly clear skies this evening. Temperatures, again, holding nearly steady in the lower to middle 40s. Otherwise, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes one more mild day before we turn cooler for the weekend and see some chances, at least for rain, maybe a little snow as well. A jury is finding two men guilty in the 2021 murder of a Dodgeville woman. Eric Way of Glendale and Philip Schmidt Way of Loveland, Colorado, were both found guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as a party to a crime. Wisconsin DOJ said the victim was Way's mother and Schmidt Way's grandmother. Prior to her death, she had agreed to sell a family farm that Schmidt Way would have inherited upon her death. An autopsy found that she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Prosecutors allege that Way had purchased products known to react together to create carbon monoxide. Schmidt Way's vehicle was allegedly caught on camera at the woman's home on the night she died. Sentencing dates had not been set for either man.
Madison police are investigating after officers found a shell casing following reports of shots fired on the city's east side Tuesday night. Officers were called to the 200 block of Swanton Road at around 735. No property damage was found, but officers did locate one shell casing. No injuries were reported and no arrests have been made. Anyone with information on the incident is urged to call Madison Area Crime Stoppers. To Milwaukee now, where police shot and injured two men early this morning after a vehicle chase. At a little after 3 a.m., officers reportedly saw a stolen car that was wanted in connection to an earlier shooting. A brief chase ensued before that car crashed. The suspects then fled on foot. Officers who chased after them on foot say they saw one of the suspects holding a gun, refusing to drop it despite multiple commands. At approximately 3.22 a.m., multiple shots were fired in the 4800 block of North 51st Street. A firearm was recovered in close proximity to the suspect at the scene. One of the men, a 19-year-old, is in critical condition. The other, a 22-year-old, is being treated for minor injuries. None of the officers was hurt. They've been placed on administrative duty. A Wisconsin Dells man will learn his fate in court today for his role in a plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Earlier this year, Brian Higgins pleaded guilty to attempting to provide material support for terrorism. Higgins acknowledged he went on a night ride on Whitmer's road with a camera rigged to his pickup truck. Now, according to investigators, Whitmer, a Democrat, was targeted as part of a broad effort by anti-government rebels to trigger a civil war around the time of the 2020 election. However, several informants and undercover FBI agents had been inside the group for months, leading to arrest in October 2020. Whitmer was not physically harmed. The Beloit Police Department is making a change to how they respond to emergency mental health situations. Our Rock County reporter, Medi Himes, set out to learn more. 4,000, that's how many emergency calls Madison Fire Department has responded to in partnership with mental health professionals as part of their crisis intervention program. Beloit Law Enforcement hopes to follow that trend. The Beloit Police Department made the announcement this week that they're partnering with Rock County Crisis Intervention to provide specialized care for those experiencing a mental health crisis. Chief Andre Sales says mental health professionals will be dispatched alongside first responders and afterwards provide follow-up care. Um, do wraparound services, uh, make sure that they are following up with them because let's face it, police officers, we respond to the calls and then after that, we're done. Sales says he believes this type of comprehensive care can lower levels of incarceration and emergency hospital visits. He also hopes it will help build more trust between the Beloit PD and community members. Just because we wear this uniform doesn't mean we're not human as well, and we truly want to help. Madison Fire Department launched its CARES program over two years ago. And I think when a city like this has a program that's respectful to people's needs that are in crisis, I think it just gives more trust to the protective services in general in the city of Madison. Chase Stedman is the Assistant yep. Chief of Medical Operations for the department. He calls their mental health partnership best practice. Health crisis, and so it really is just all about trust and getting people the services they truly need. In Beloit, I'm Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. Last year in Madison, only 3% of mental health calls were transferred to police. Beloit law enforcement hopes to see similar results. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, a local lawmaker joins public health professionals in a call for cleaner car emissions. Plus, the DNR offering ways you can keep the holiday season eco-friendly. How you can reduce all that waste left over from the festivities. The price of gold is at a seven-year high. Get top cash on the spot for your gold at Diamond Select. Cash in today while the price of gold is high. Don't miss out. Get instant cash for your gold today at Diamond Select, downtown Stoughton. There's still time to get your home ready for the holidays during Steinhoffel's holiday sale. Save big and get the room you've been wishing for. Start with 20% off all Christmas decor. Save big on a new sofa for dad, a new mattress for mom, and make your dream room more affordable with Steinhoffel's 60-month financing. It's the holiday sale at Steinhoffel's. Shop in store or online at steinhoffel's.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffel's.
At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find bicycles to quality, electric e-bikes from Trek, Electra, Felt, Giant, and more. Trek offers the best-selling e-bike in America, Trek Verve Plus, under $2,500. At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find fat e-bikes, mountain e-bikes, road e-bikes, bike path e-bikes, and more. Free services included. The place to shop for your new e-bike is Machinery Row Bicycles, the most beautiful bicycle store in the world. At Diamond Select, our on-site goldsmith can create a beautiful, one-of-a-kind piece. Whether it's repurposing an old ring or creating from a picture online, we're here to help you create jewelry of your dreams. Diamond Select, downtown Stoke. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Some Dane County leaders and health professionals are calling on the Environmental Protection Agency to pass strong, clean car standards. State Senator Melissa Agard, along with Dane County Supervisor Yogesh Chavla and others, are hoping these new standards will accelerate Wisconsin toward zero emissions. They say investments in charging infrastructure, battery manufacturing, and tax incentives are driving down electric vehicle costs, helping reduce carbon pollution. We must continue to push forward and commit to sustaining these standards in order to move forward for a healthy environment for all of us. They want to see the Biden administration and EPA finalize the standards to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles by the end of the year. The DNR is giving advice on how to reduce waste during the holidays. The agency is focusing on recycling and food waste prevention. There are items that can go in the recycling bin like cardboard. They say to flatten all those boxes first and plain paper, but not necessarily wrapping paper. Many recyclers don't want any of that. Another common reason that programs will just say no wrapping paper at all is because people tend to include the bows and the ribbons with their wrapping paper when they're recycling. Or they'll take their wrapping paper and roll it into a ball. They also say don't throw old Christmas lights in the recycle bin. The light cords get wrapped up around recycling equipment bringing the whole operation to a screeching halt. Well, still ahead, the Madison Reading Project's book drive is ending soon. How you can still help them out. Plus, the UW-Madison professor's knowledge is put to the test by a group of kindergartners. Why they were in his lecture hall today. And we could be in for a bit of rain tomorrow night. Gary previews what to expect in his complete forecast. Save big money in your next painting project now at Menards. Pittsburgh Grand Distinction Interior Paint is a premium paint and primer with excellent durability and comes in over 701 coat colors. A gallon is $34.87 after $5 mail-in rebate. Add a pop of color to your home with Paramount Interior Paint. It provides the most advanced protection and true one coat coverage. A gallon of Paramount Flat Interior Paint is only $44.98. Plus, a Menards gift card is always a great gift idea. Whatever the holidays mean to you, get the most out of them in a new Honda. Whether it's taking in the lights with all your friends in a spacious Accord, or taking in a snow day in a rugged CRV. Your holiday adventure awaits with a new Honda during Happy Honda Days. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. Never have I ever toured in a rock band. Yep, I play a mean air guitar. Never have I ever burnt a holiday dinner. <laughs> I have no reservations about making reservations. Never have I ever put literally every single item in our store on sale, even the items that never go on sale. Every item? Oh, come on. Join us now through December 24th for our never on sale sale. Only at Rogers and Holland's. McCann Furniture is closing its doors forever. The owners are retiring. It's the final days of our going out of business sale. After 119 years, our final day is December 17th. Everything in the store must be sold. Make us an offer on quality name brand furniture, including Amish, dining room and bedroom sets, recliners, upholstery, and mattresses. Free financing, special sale hours. Time is running out, so hurry in today to the final days going out of business sale at McGann Furniture. Downtown Baraboo. You'll be glad you did. 
Volunteering offers more than benefits for those served. Volunteers reap health benefits from the time they give. RSVP of Dane County's Driver Services Program needs volunteers to provide rides to medical appointments and deliver meals to older adults in Dane County. Ideal candidates are of legal driving age, love to drive, and meet new people. Schedules are very flexible, and volunteer drivers will use their own vehicles and are reimbursed for mileage. To make a difference this holiday season, please contact RSVP of Dane County today. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Well, you never truly know what will come out of a kindergartner's mouth, especially in a lecture hall. A UW-Madison professor continued his tradition of inviting a class of young learners to his political science class. Our Catherine Merck was inside the classroom today. Do you know how many planet Earths would fit inside of the sun? Or what's at the bottom of the ocean? Those are just some of the things on the minds of kindergartners, and they're taking their questions straight to one of the smartest people that they could ask. What's my favorite toy? Uh... Today, a class of kindergartners was invited to Kenneth Mayer's introductory American politics class. These are the toughest questions. He's been giving the best answers he can to these young students since 2003. I'm not doing very well here. I've gotten one right and five wrong. He says it's a day of fun for everyone in the room that the kindergartners hopefully remember once their feet are able to touch the floor when sitting in these big seats. Yeah, the parents were telling me their kids were super excited. They were going to go to college. You know, that sticks around and you know they think about this but you know it's just it's just a lot of fun that's why I do it one of the kindergartners questions that got the college students the most excited what are the answers to the final exam the professor wasn't able to answer that one reporting from UW Madison's campus I'm Catherine Merck news 3 now Smart question. Well, it's the final push for the community book drive at the Madison Reading Project. Supporting the book drive, which ends tomorrow, will allow the local nonprofit to get thousands of new books for kids in the 608 to take home and keep. So far, the Madison Reading Project has raised more than 90% of its $100,000 goal. Local businesses like Lake City Books in downtown are happy to help the cause. As a new business, I thought it was really important to kick it off right this year with the holidays and be contributing back to the community right away. So we're offering 10% off any books that you donate, which is a little bit of uh, our own donation. We're also offering all of the tips that we get when we gift wrap presents this year. We're giving those all to the Madison Reading Project as well. 15,000 new books to kids ahead of winter break. If you would like to support the community book drive, you can find a link at channel3000.com. Mild temperatures for now, but a storm is heading our way this weekend. Here is Gary with the complete forecast. Well, usually in front of a storm, you usually have mild temperatures, and that's exactly what we have coming. Three things you need to know. It's going to be even milder tomorrow. Today, we were in the upper 40s, close to 50 here in Madison. Tomorrow, I think we'll probably be in the middle 50s, and just about everybody will see temperatures in the 50s. We'll see some showers tomorrow night into Saturday morning. But I don't think there's going to be much of any mixed precipitation before the precipitation ends on uh, Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday through Thursday of next week will be dry, maybe a couple of showers toward the end of next week, but temperatures will be above normal through that entire time. In fact, we'll be 54 tomorrow when the average high is 35, so that's almost 20 degrees above average. 44 on Saturday, and then a little colder for Sunday, but notice those high temperatures next week. Mainly in the mid to upper 30s, a few days, like uh, on Thursday and Friday, high temperatures will be in the low to mid 40s. So the next weather system coming in, beginning at uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, notice we'll have uh, partly cloudy skies here. The showers come in from the south and west, but notice they're mainly in the form of rain, and that's because the wind shift to the west and northwest spring in the colder air, 6.30 a.m. is just starting to enter our, the area. But by the time it gets cold enough where we could see that mix of rain and snow, now most of the precipitation is heading off to the north and east, and that's pretty much it. So as far as the rain is concerned, probably looking at about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain through much of the area, maybe a little bit more over parts of southeastern Wisconsin. But the snow, that's going to favor northern Wisconsin, and even that, for the most part, will be less than an inch, maybe a, a dusting down toward, uh, say, Richland Center and uh, north and west of the Dells. Weather track right now, you can see this weather system coming together out to the west of us, but... The jet stream is farther to the north. We're in that El Nino weather pattern, so the polar jet stream stays near the U.S.-Canadian border. That brings mild Pacific air in. The southern branch of the jet stream, the subtropical jet stream, staying down to the south. Uh, here in our part of the Midwest, 
Again, those upper level winds from the west and southwest and surface winds from the south and southeast just continue to bring in that mild weather. This first cold front has more of a sh wind shift to the west. The coldest air is back to the north and west of the storm, and that may be staying mainly north and west of us. Just a little taste as we head into Wednesday. But right now, temperatures mid 30s in northern Wisconsin, still lower 40s here. And notice they're warmer out to the west of us. So we'll actually see our temperatures rise overnight. In fact, planning your night, look for temperatures at 9 p.m. around 43 in Madison about 44 by midnight. So you can see the temperatures are actually going up as we head through the overnight hours. Mid 40s over much of southern Wisconsin. Temperatures mid 40s by early tomorrow morning with some breaks in the clouds getting temperatures up into the middle 50s tomorrow. Overnight look for low 46 in the town of Perry, 45 in Mount Horeb and 45 in Sun Prairie. Across the rest of southern Wisconsin low 48 in Janesville, 46 in Lone Rock and 42 in Camp Douglas. For tomorrow look for variably cloudy skies but very mild and seasonally mild with a high temperature of 54. And then future track beginning early on Saturday morning. Notice those temperatures still around 40 degrees, 3 a.m. with mainly rain here by 6 a.m. around 40. Maybe a little bit of a mix like up toward Camp Douglas where temperatures will be in the mid 30s. But again, by the time most of this precipitation moves on through, those temperatures are still going to be far enough above freezing that would preclude any snow accumulations. Rainfall amounts about a tenth to a quarter of an inch. If there are any snow accumulations, they'll be more likely north of La Crosse and into central Wisconsin. First warrant 7 to 10 day forecast. 32 on Sunday, but then mid 30s early next week and then lower to middle 40s for Thursday and Friday. Maybe a chance for a rain shower Friday afternoon, a better chance for some rain and snow showers Sunday of next weekend. And coming up in sports, we're live outside the UW Fieldhouse to preview Wisconsin's Sweet 16 matchup against Penn State. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Think all Medicare plans are the same? Think again. A Medicare Advantage plan from Dean Health Plan gives you the benefits you need with premiums as low as $0 a month. Medical, hospital, and prescription drug coverage comes with $0 copays for primary care doctor visits. And extra benefits can help you save even more. Get preventive and comprehensive dental, $250 for eyewear, and $750 for hearing aids. Plus, you can save on over-the-counter health and wellness items. All this and a free fitness membership at more than 20,000 locations. Call 1-866-249-1748 now to request your free Dean Health Plan Medicare Advantage Guide. That's 1-866-249-1748. Dean Health Plan, right here with you. Habitat homes are not free. They're built and bought by hardworking families just like yours. Families with jobs, dreams, and a strong determination to create a better future. With stable homes, they can invest more in their health, education, community, and beyond. Our record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. With inflation rising at record levels and incomes not keeping pace, you might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today and call 1-800-506-5596 that's 800-506-5596. Or visit www.kwwf.org. Friday morning, we're giving you some cooking ideas ahead of your holiday gathering. Angie Horgan with the Wisconsin Beef Council is helping you perfect that Christmas roast. And we'll have an update on our chance of rain and snow this weekend. Join us tomorrow morning between 4.30 and 7.00.
Wisconsin Sweet 16 matchup against Penn State is currently going on inside the Fieldhouse right behind me. And if you were thinking, hey, didn't these two teams play each other in this exact spot a season ago? Well, you'd be right. The Badgers won that match in five sets. Now, this season, it's been all about the climb. It's something Kelly Sheffield talked about in the summer, just improving each day so you can be playing your best volleyball in the biggest matches on the biggest stage. And the scary thing is, this team hasn't reached their peak yet. I think we're very close, and I think we're going to keep climbing. I mean, no matter no matter what we got ahead of us, that's what we strive for. And I think we're doing a really good job there. Um, and I'm just really excited to see what this team can continue to do. I feel like we're in a really good spot right now. We're kind of firing on all cylinders, and it feels pretty smooth on the court. So I'm really excited to see um, how we do and what we do against Penn State. The Wisconsin men's basketball team is pretty familiar with big games against Arizona. You remember the two times they met in the NCAA tournament back when Wisconsin went to back-to-back -back Final Fours, both Badger wins. And Saturday's showdown in Tucson is no different. It's number one Arizona against number 23 Wisconsin. And Greg Gard said today he's not too interested in that number in front of the Wildcats' name. Tells me we're playing a heck of a good team. I mean, I, I don't... I, I didn't squawk when we weren't ranked. I'm not made, I haven't said one word about us being ranked. And, you know, it's we know we're playing a good team. I feel like we can play with anybody. We've had that mentality from the beginning of the year. I mean, our, our schedule's loaded this year. And so having those tough teams, um, it's been really good for us to kind of know where we're at. Um, we're going in this game with no fear, really. So we're going to look, look to get this one, um, look for a battle, and try to get a win. Now that game is on Saturday. The Wisconsin huddle with Badger women's hockey captain Britta Curl is on Friday at 6.30 right here on News 3. Now we're going to talk about the Gophers, Caroline Harvey, and we're also going to break the ice with Britta. So just a huge couple of games and days for Wisconsin athletics all starting tonight with Badger volleyball. And of course, we'll have highlights and reaction from how they did in the Sweet 16 coming up later at 10. Guys. All right, Zach, thank you. Now let's go back to the Wisconsin huddle. The Wisconsin women's hockey team is preparing for a big weekend against Minnesota. And in this week's edition of Huddle Unleashed, Zach challenges forward Britta Curl to a putting competition. And welcome to this week's Wisconsin Huddle Unleashed. I'm Zach Hanley. She's Britta Curl, and we're going to putt for prizes. Britta, when's the last time you played golf? Uh, I got out a couple times this summer. Okay, um, a couple more than me. Would couple. you say you're good? I wouldn't Decent. say I'm good. I'd say I can hit the ball off the ground. Okay. I can hopefully make a putt. We'll see. All right. Well, I'll let you go first. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's one. You can't really take out your aggression as oh, much in golf. <laughs> yeah. We're dialed in. You're dialed in. Hey, uh, my goal was to make one. I wrote it down <laughs> before we started. I uh, made one. Yeah, you're out of prizes, Ross. I'm, I'm very close. <laughs> Six. Well, I played high school golf for two years. Oh, okay, so you forgot yeah. to mention But that. I was only like 13.